you are listening to the Hot Tip Bets Podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the Hot Tip Bets Podcast. Today we're going to be recapping last week's college football and NFL picks, talking a little bit about the return of match and football coming up here in November, and also discussing some of the biggest rivalries in college football ahead of this weekend's Red River Showdown um, between Texas and Oklahoma. Also be covering a little bit of the MV, NFL's COVID situation and um, what they're currently going through, what the games could be looking like for this weekend, as well as giving out some picks for college football week six and week five of the NFL. So, to get, to get started, uh, last week's recap for college football, we ended up going two and three with our picks. First game we had on the card was Baylor at West Virginia. Um, West Virginia did end up cashing that. We had West Virginia plus three in that one. It did take double overtime, but they ended up winning that game, 27-20. to 20. Next game on the card we had last week was TCU at Texas. This game, Texas never really looked like they had any chance of covering the 10.5 point spread. They were kind of in the game as far as winning it till the end. But a TCU safety, um, smartly timed one that is at the end of the game, was enough to ice it for them, and they ended up losing that game outright. So that's kind of an interesting little dilemma that we got here going into this week's uh, Texas rivalry game against Oklahoma down at the Cotton Bowl. Um, next game that we had on the card last week was probably my favorite game of last week, and lucky for me it ended up cashing. That was Memphis and SMU. SMU looks like a team that's going to be very make some noise in the American this year. They improved to 4-0 on the season uh, with the last-second field goal that got them to win, and they also covered the 2.5. That takes uh, Memphis to 1-1 one one on the season. Like I said last week, Memphis hadn't played in a month. They looked rusty. They didn't look like they were themselves, especially like how they um, had played last year. They kind of didn't really look like that. Uh, another game we had on last week's card, another loser. We had Texas Tech, not Texas Tech, Virginia Tech at Duke. Uh, While well, Virginia Tech played semi-well in this one, they didn't. Uh, we didn't really have a chance ever to cover the 11.5 point spread. Duke kind of just... Um, Kind of came out firing in that game. This marks the second time this season that I've bet against Duke, and Duke has kind of screwed me. So maybe that's something to look forward to this week. Hint, hint, something's coming up in college football again. Might surprise you. Uh, the last game we had on the college football slate was Auburn at Georgia, and this was possibly my worst pick of the day. Auburn, I had Auburn plus six in this one, or six and a half. I don't even remember what the spread was. I'd have to go look, but it, it was never in question. The Auburn was horrible in this game. They ended up scoring six points the entire game. They got completely blown out by Georgia. Georgia's defense just looked unstoppable. And it's probably, um, it's definitely the best defense in the SEC this year. And that pretty much means it's the best defense in the country this year. So Georgia's going to be a team that is competing in the SEC West there. Um, and yeah, that kind of covers the recap for college football. Moving on to the NFL. Again, we didn't do very good. Went one and two last week. Uh, first game, unfortunately, this one was the bad one. Cardinals at Panthers. The Cardinals didn't look good at all. That secondary was with you know without Buda Baker or without Chris Banjo. It was just banged up. They couldn't stop anything. Couldn't make a tackle. The Panthers were gaining extra yards on every play, um, and the Cardinals just didn't look. They looked like they just keep getting from how good they played against the Niners Week One. They just haven't been able to do that. Um, ever since so it'll be very interesting to see what the Cardinals do this week against the Jets and the Panthers on the other hand their defense was just making stops and the Panthers rushing game even without Christian McCaffrey Davis was out there you know just rushing the ball very well so Panthers easily covered that one next game we had on the card was Browns at Cowboys and even though Dak threw for over 600 yards in this game the Cowboys put up 38 points that was or 39 something like that the Cowboys just they were never really actually in the game. I think the Browns were winning this thing in the entire game. So, I mean, the four and a half on that Cowboys pick was just never going to be a winner. The one game we did get right this week, Colts at Bears. Um, it was our only winner of the day. And the Bears under Nick Foles didn't look any better. They really looked worse than they had under Mitch. Um, yeah, I don't know that Nick Foles is really the answer there. I don't know what the answer is for the Bears. Even though they were 3-0 and going into this game, you just knew they weren't a team that was 3-0. and You knew they were a team that was going to struggle in this. And as much as I'm not a fan of Phillip Rivers, the Colts definitely took care of business in this one, getting us the only win of the weekend. So that about sums up the recap um, as far as picks last week. Let's talk a little bit about 
the return of Maction today, as I record this Wednesday, uh, Maction has released their schedule for the upcoming 2020 fall season. It's going to consist of six regular season games along with a uh, championship game played December 18th. The first, and now the first game that they'll have is starting Wednesday, November 4th, and they will have games on Tuesday and Wednesday for the first three weeks of the season, which just kind of so happens to coincide, I don't know if it was planned or not, with the start of college basketball. That fourth week is about when college basketball, I think November 25th, 24th, I'm not exactly sure. I think the Wednesday before Thanksgiving is the official kind of start date of college basketball right now. Um, so that was kind of interesting. So we'll have, so come November, we should have, you know, college sports going on throughout every day of the week. There should be something on. And yeah, with that schedule release, we now have all 10 FBF conferences now have games scheduled to take place in the fall 2020 season. So we'll see if we get these games through and it'll be interesting to see these conferences that kind of started later, how many, if they're able to get full slates in since they didn't have um, full games or they don't really have any buffer in case of COVID testing. So that'll kind of be interesting. Uh, next topic I wanted to cover, <clears throat> college football rivalries going into the Red River Showdown this weekend. Um, if you saw my Twitter this week, uh, Fox College Football tweeted out a graphic to ask what the best rivalries in college football were. And they had left out, they should have like had six on there, and, but they left out Army-Navy, which I don't understand how you could even consider talking about college football rivalries without talking about an army navy i feel like army navy should be number one on everyone's list i mean this year not they won't have their own weekend just how you know all the later season games are going to fall but in a normal college football year army navy is the only game going on that weekend so it's really i mean they have they're not just a one it's not a rivalry game it's a whole rivalry weekend i don't know how so I feel like when it comes to the rivalries, there's kind of a clear top four. Um, Army Navy, I feel like, yeah, no brainer number one. Then they got, you know, you get the Iron Bowl, Alabama, Auburn. I would put that as number two, and then I'd put uh, the game, Michigan, Ohio State, as number three. But those two can kind of be interchanged, whether or not you're a bigger SEC or a Big Ten fan. It kind of just depends on that, to be quite honest. And I feel like as of right now, especially this year, Oklahoma, Texas. Well, it'll be a big rivalry. You know, Texas is. I don't remember what their official rank was going into this week. It was high teens. Or, I think maybe 21, actually. Um, maybe somewhere around there. So, I mean, it's, and Oklahoma's not even ranked anymore. So, I mean, yeah, it'll be a rivalry game, but it's nothing to write home about. Some other big rivalries that you can also mention up there. I feel like that's the top four. But some other ones, you know, Georgia, Florida, the world's largest cocktail party. That one, that one's obviously up there. You could put that at five, or you could put... Notre Dame, USC at five. I think those two are probably five and six. You can probably switch those around uh, wherever you want. And that kind of rounds out the top ones. But one rivalry that you can't forget about, um, which unfortunately we are not going to see too much anymore because UConn left the American, but the civil conflict game before, between UConn and US, UFC, uh, UCF, I'm sorry. You know, there that is that is a rivalry game that was unknown, but will be remembered forever, so I just thought I'd throw that one in there. So another topic I wanted to cover real quick here is a little bit about the NFL's COVID situation going into what will be week five of the NFL season. So last week, uh, Steelers and Titans game got postponed to later in the season. They both ended up having week four buys um, because several Titans players ended up testing positive. The Titans actually had a few more positive tests come up today on Wednesday. Um, with other so training facilities was unable to reopen. So they, that kind of, you know, threw up a lot of mess, especially in fantasy. If you had the Titans, Steelers players, I kind of, you know, had to scramble to find those. But it, also, if you were betting on either of those games, kind of just depends on uh, what book you were betting. I know some books, the game has to happen. If the game doesn't happen at the time that it's listed, then it's no action. In other books, it's as long as it happens by the Tuesday after then it's then you get action otherwise then you're refunded and i know there are some books out there this year since the whole covid situation as long as that originally scheduled game takes place some point during the season those uh, tickets will be valid so make sure if you had you know, tickets in on those games you see how your book is and that way you know especially this year you know how that's going to be treated in future uh weeks we also had another game that you know almost got well did get postponed 
um, was the Chiefs Patriots game. Cam Newton tested positive. That game got moved to Wednesday, which personally that was pretty great. You know, I liked having the little bit of overlap there on Monday night for two games. I don't know. I don't know that anyone was complaining about having more football. So kind of just got to wait and see. You know, the Patriots had a couple more players test positive this week. Um, so that kind of see what happens to their game coming up this Sunday. But really, when it all said and done, we knew that there was going to be positive tests. You know, this isn't anything unexpected. Obviously, if you have that many people together, people are going to test positive. And I fully believe if the MLB was able to continue their season after multiple teams tested positive, that the NFL, you know, the team, the, the sport that runs the country, I feel like they will have no problem finding a way to get this season done. So that kind of wraps up our news for the past week. If you see anything that you want me to talk about in the podcast, you know, during the week, just hit me up on Twitter or Instagram or something. And um, I would definitely add any topic, definitely take suggestions for topics you want to hear about. Those are kind of just the biggest three things that I had, you know, saw from this week, you know, on my Twitter timeline. So that's what we talked about. So without further ado, let's get into the college football picks for this coming Saturday, which will be... Week six, the college football season, if you're looking at it like that, but it's kind of kind of hard to tell this year. So we'll, we're just going to call it week six for now. We'll see what happens once, you know, all the other conferences get back. So there's a couple games. I kind of have a smaller slate this week. You know, there wasn't a – even though there was more games than there was last week, I think it wasn't – it just didn't – it wasn't as many that appealed to me. So we're going to just throw out a couple of leans here real quick that I, I like but that I won't personally be betting, but just, just so you know kind of what I'm thinking. So the first one, Duke at Syracuse. So as we talked about earlier, Duke has, you know, I've been on the wrong side of the Duke games twice this year. And Duke is get, is favored by two and a half points. They come into this game 0-4. They really haven't been covering all that well this game. They, they covered in the two games that I bet against them, but the other two they didn't. And I really think that even though I'm doing it again, I'm betting against Duke, but I think Syracuse will get it done in the Carrier Dome, and I would be on Syracuse plus 2.5 in this game if I was betting it. Uh, the next game I like, FAU minus 2.5 at Southern Miss. Southern Miss, you know, they fired their coach after, like, game or two. They got a win last week, um, or I don't remember what it was. They're 1-3 and three now, but, you know, they haven't been very great. You know, FAU started their season last year with a win over Charlotte, and even though they didn't blow them out or anything, they did look good in that game. And I think that even with Southern Myth having a few extra games under their belt, I think FAU is going to take care of business in this one. And the final lean that I have uh, before we get into the actual picks for the weekend is Mississippi State at Kentucky with Kentucky minus one and a half. Um, and Mississippi State, they've been a very volatile team this year. You know, that's kind of just what you get when you bring in a coach like Mike Leach. You're going to beat the, you know, Defending national champions one week, and then the next week you're going to lose to an SEC team that hasn't, or a team that hasn't won an SEC game in over a thousand days. So it's kind of hard to see what Mike Leach is going to do. And I really think that this Kentucky defense is going to be be able to stop the air raid offense. And I don't know that it's going to work out as quite as well as they want. Um, I do like KJ Costello, but I don't. I think if I was betting on this game. I take Kentucky minus one and a half, but I am going to stay off of that one. So now getting into the official picks for the weekend. The first one we have, Florida minus 6.5 at Texas A&M. This game is set to kick off at 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern time on Saturday. Uh, Florida comes into this game 2-0 um, and on the season, 1-1 one one against the spread, while Texas A&M comes in 1-1 one and 0-2 one and oh and against the spread. You know, Texas A&M really struggled against Vanderbilt which is not the team you want to be struggling against. And yeah, you could say they were looking ahead to the Alabama game or whatever. But really, when it came to that Alabama game, it didn't really, I mean, they didn't look any more prepared than they did going into Vanderbilt. So it's kind of hard to tell on that one. Uh, Florida, on the other hand, they have actually looked great this year. You know, they seem like a team that's going to make a lot of noise. They're in the top five in the AP pool now. Um, they're getting 7.8 yards per play, and they're only allowing 5.85 you know, that defense is being able to stop it. They're being able to move the ball extremely well. Being able to limit penalties, only having four per uh, four penalties a game for 42 yards. Well, Texas A&M is having 7.5 penalties for 54 yards. So, you know, I just really like Florida in this game. I think six and a half is <clears throat> a perfect line. If it goes up to seven, you know, it's not as great as a bet. Um, but if you can get this one at six and a half still, I think Florida is a great bet in this game. 
All right, so moving on to the afternoon slate of college football games. We got Pitt minus 5.5 at Boston College. This game is set to take place at 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, Eastern time on Saturday. Pittsburgh comes into this game 3-1 and 1-2-1 and one, and one against the spread. Boston College comes into this game 2-1 and 2-1 and one, and two and one against the spread. Pittsburgh's been looking really good, you know, been able to move the ball. They're averaging 5.63 yards per play while only allowing 3.89 yards per play, and that's really impressive. That defense is playing stellar. Yeah, they had the game against Austin P and stuff, which kind of boosts that stat, but still, they've been doing very well. Um, Boston College, on the other hand, 5.04 yards per play and allowing 5.41. You know, they are still moving the ball decently well, but they're allowing way more yards. Uh, Pittsburgh's been a been averaging over their first four games of the season. They got averaged 32 points a game. Well, Boston College is only averaging 24 points a game over that same time. Um, and they're both coming into the game off of losses. You know, uh, Pitt had a one point loss to NC State last week, while Boston College had a one a four point loss to North Carolina. So they're both going to be looking for a win. But I like Pitt in this game. I think five and a half is a great spread. If you can keep that under a touchdown, I really like Pitt in this one. That's my play. Pitt minus five and a half. Um, and my last play for college football is a short card this week, only three plays. We got Miami plus 14 at Clemson. Uh, this game is set to kick off at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, and this is kind of, I think it's on ABC. It's the primetime game of the day. I'm pretty sure college game day is going to be there. Uh, yeah, I think that's where they were going this week. Um, Miami is looking really good. Both these teams come to this game 3-0, but Miami is 3-0 against the spread, while Clemson is only 0-3 against the spread. Miami, I, I watched the first game they had, Miami UAB. I watched that first half, and I'm like, man, Miami is super overrated. I remember I even said it. I might have tweeted it out. And then I, right after I did that, Miami just never slowed down. They've been scoring. They absolutely torched Florida State a couple weeks ago. Um, they're averaging 43.33 points over their first three games. Clemson's averaging 42.33, which both these teams are going to slow down a little bit this game, you know, when they had to play tougher defenses. Uh, and Miami's winning the turnover margin, too, you know, with plus one per game, while Clemson only got plus th .33 per game. I mean, they're both winning, but they're not, you know, Miami's got a better turnover margin there. And as far as tackles for loss go, Miami's defense has just been stellar. Uh, they've got, they have gained, they have 131 yards tackle for loss over the first three games, but only allowing 55 against them. Clemson, on the other hand, has 98 yards for tackle for loss, while only allowing 79. So Miami, their defense is on point, their offensive line is on point. I just don't know how you give them 14 points. Yes, I know they're playing Clemson. I know they're playing a team that, you know, is off of a national title run and a national title win the year before that. But I really, I think that Miami, I don't know, I don't know that they have a chance to win this game, but 14 in the points, I mean, two touchdowns, there's no way that this is that, is that big of a game. I think that this is going to be easily a one-score game. It's going to come down to the wire, so I'm taking Miami plus 14 in this one. All right, that around wraps it up for the college football picks this week. Now we're moving into the NFL. The first game I like, um, it's going to just be a lean right officially right now if it changes uh, come game time, we'll tweet it out, because the Bills at Titans, who knows if this game's even happening, um, I really, I like the Titans in this game, to be honest, even with uh, the unknown of who they're going to have on the field, I saw this game, you know, I, th I think it was listed, you know, it was a couple, couple points, you know, two or three points there, uh, as far as, as the time of recording this, I don't see any books that actually have this game up on the board anymore, uh, most books are just waiting to see, you know, who's actually playing and what, what they got to put that at. But, you know, Josh Allen, he's put up good numbers uh, so far this year, throwing the ball, uh, averaging 316 um, passing yards a game, and while well, also putting up 30.75 points per game. But the Titans come into this game, you know, if they do play, they'll be well-rested off of their uh, COVID bye week last week, you know, and they're averaging 26 points a game, you know, not quite as good, you know, four points off of what the Bills are averaging. But they're still, you know putting up a lot of points, you know. They might be 0-3 against the spread, but they're still 3-0 on the year. The Bulldogs are 4-0 on the year. I don't know that the Titans are just going to roll over in this game. So I, I do like the Titans in this game. It's hard to really give a pick out for this one without seeing the spread. Um, so, yeah, if there is anything that changes for that, then I will tweet it out. But as of now, I do like the Titans. It's not going on the official card because we don't have a line. But, yeah, if we any changes come game time, I will be tweeting that out. The next game on the card... 
We have the Jaguars plus six and a half at the Texans. This game is set to kick off at 1 p.m. Eastern. Jaguars come into this game 1 and 3, 2 and 2 against the spread. While the Texans come into this game 0 and 4 and 0 and 4 against the spread. Um, Bill O'Brien just got fired, and no, no new, no breaking news there from the Texans. You know that was kind of expected. Everyone was just waiting for it to happen. You know the De DeAndre Hopkins trade seemed like a last-ditch effort to try and make something happen, try and get his team going, and clearly it did not work. Yes, they did have a tough schedule, but there was nothing positive coming out of you know the Texans in quite some time. Um, but Romeo Cornell does take over, and you know even though he didn't have the best run, I think his last coaching job he had was in Kansas City. Uh, before Andy Reid took over, which you know led up led to the number one overall pick for them um, in Eric Fisher. But Romeo Cornell, he's not a bad coach. I think he will do fine for this Texans team. But with that said, I don't know that six and a half points is going to be able for a team that hasn't won a game. I don't know that six and a half points is very likely to be covered. Um, you know, the Texans haven't had a very tough time holding onto the football. They've only had the ball twenty four um, minutes and fifteen seconds. Uh, time of possession. Well, the Jaguars not crazy good, but 28 minutes and six seconds. You know, full four minutes longer than Texans are having. So I do like the Jaguars in this game, and I'll be taking the Jaguars plus six and a half. Uh, the next game on this card, another early game. We got the Rams minus seven at the Washington Football Team. Um, Rams come into this game three and one, and they're two and two against the spread. Washington comes into this game. 1-3, and three, um, while also being 1-2-1 one, and one against the spread. The Rams have just, you know, they're kind of sneakily, in a division that's very tough, they're kind of sneakily just staying up there. You know, they're averaging 397.25 yards per game, while the Washington's only averaging 301.75 yards per game. You know, a whole 100 yards more than this Washington team. I think this Rams team, I don't know that they're back quite to Super Bowl contenders yet, but they do seem to be trending up from a, Definite down season last year after their Super Bowl hangover. So I think the Rams, you know, minus seven in this one is a great pick. Uh, they got 6.6 .6 yards per play averaging, and while Washington has 4.61 yards per play. So I am going to be taking the Rams minus seven in this one as my second NFL pick of the day. The last play in the NFL comes in the Vikings at Seahawks game. Seahawks are minus seven in this one. This is Sunday Night Football. Um, kicking off at 8.20 p.m. Eastern. The Vikings come into this game 1-3 and 2-2 and two and two against the spread. Well, the Seahawks come in and impressed at 4-0 and 4-0 against the spread. Um, and even though I'm a Cardinal fan, you know, I hate, hate picking the Seahawks. I do really like the Seahawks in this game. Um, their time, you know, they've just been able to put up great numbers this year, averaging 35.5 points per game. Well, the Vikings are only averaging 26.5 points per game. Um, while at the same time, they got 300. Russell Wilson's, you know, out there putting up numbers with 303 passing yards, averaging per game. And it's just been, Seahawks just look like a team that is putting stuff together at the right time. And they look like a team that's going to be contending, definitely contending for the NFC West, and if probably contending for, you know, Super Bowl and the NFC Championship or something. But, you know, just in, this division is just so good, and I think the Seahawks are going to continue their winning and cover the seven in this game. So that about wraps it up for episode two of the Hot Tip Bets podcast. If you haven't already, uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter at and Twitter and Instagram at Hot Tip Bets Chris. Make sure you uh, also follow just at Hot Tip Bets Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You know all the social media. Everything's linked down below. Um, and also go check out the website. You know I'll post the full results up there, so you can go check out not only what I did last week, but what I've done since the website started uh, back in December 2019. Um, you can also take a look. We got the Hot Tip Bets computer model picks up there. You know, it's got picks for the MLB playoffs. It'll have a pick for, you know, um, NBA Finals, Game 5 coming up here on Friday, which, you know, could potentially be the last game of that series, um, which I'm excited for the NBA to be over just because there's too many sports going on right now and it's hard to follow everything. And it'll be nice when it's just, you know, MLB playoffs and football, like a normal fall. Um, and as always, you know, you can find the college football and NFL picks up on the website. And yeah, that about wraps it up. So I will see you guys next week.